can't stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are giving Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are giving Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done This is a very impressive weapon, this is, sir As soon as them Nazi paratroopers cop a load of this you won't see their eels for dust. Do we have to drag this great big gun out here with us, sir? I mean, it's an awful fag. An awful fag? Yes. We're on active service, Wilson. This gun plays a very important part in the efficiency test we're going to do today. The order's clearly stated, bring the Smith gun. That's right, sir. It says here, bring sandwiches. <laughs> bring the Smith gun. Get the men loaded, will you, Jones? I can't, sir. The band's locked and Walker's got the key. Well, go and get it. And hurry up, it's getting late. Right, sir. Hurry, hurry up, sir. Yes, sir. You get the cover made for the gun, Gumfrey? Uh, yes, sir. Where is it? It's in the cab, sir. Uh, my sister Dolly worked on it till after midnight. Now, we'll go and get it and put it on. Go and help him, please, sir. All right. Joe, where's the key of the van, Mr. Manning, ready to make an early start? Joe, where's he got to? <laughs> Jack Jones, the butcher. Listen! I gave Joe 50 quid in once for half a ton of onions. And, and I want them here. He promised to bring them round at my shop yesterday. Where are they? Well, don't ask me. Well, I want them round here at once. Well, you can't see him. We're going away for the weekend. Going away for the weekend? Yes. <laughs> We're going on a home guard proficiency test. Listen, I'm coming round here to get my onions. And if I don't get them, mate, they won't be bread in, in your sausages. They'll be you. And, and I shan't be fussy when I put the seasoning. <laughs> We've got the cover on the gun, sir. Would you like to come and have a look at it? Ah, oh, thank you, Fraser. Mr. Scottrick. Mrs. Dolly made it out of an old chair cover. <laughs> Make us look like a lot of pansies. This is terrible. No problem, sir. Don't hurt his feelings. Oh, well. That's awfully nice, Godfrey, but uh, I don't think we really need it now, you know. It's, after all, it's not raining. Sir. Ah, Walker. Unlock the van. Uh, ah, well, that's going to be a bit difficult, sir. Why? You got, haven't you got the key? Yeah, I've got the key, sir, but, uh, well, you see, the thing is, that's not oh, a problem, give really. Oh, uh, And Walker, if you've been up to any monkey business, I shall be down on you like a ton of bricks. <laughs> You see, the thing is that those onions don't belong to me. I was delivering them to a customer. How dare you? I'll talk to you afterwards. Come on, Wilson. Let's get off. OK, hadn't we better unload the onions first? There's no time for that now. We're, we're already late. All right. Get the men on board. Yes, Tell them to climb over the onions. At the double, on the onions, climb! <laughs> Uncle Arthur. Yeah? I can't travel on top of all those onions. I shall cry my eyes out. Well, don't be so mad. It can be, Frank. Get on board with the others. I shall tell Mum. Oh, sorry. Just get up. Go. Wilson! Coming! Sorry, Mr. Manning, I can't help it. It's the onions. Haven't you got a handkerchief? No. Wilson. <laughs> yes, sir? Give this boy a handkerchief. Aye. Right. 
You know, sir, we really ought not to go on these efficiency tests. I mean, it's courting disaster. Oh, nonsense. Anyway, we'd have a job to get out of it, wouldn't we? <laughs> Move down one, will you, boy? <laughs> Every other Home Guard unit in our area has been on them. And if we funked it, they'd say it was because we hadn't any confidence in ourselves. Well, I have every confidence in ourselves, Captain Manrin. Thank you, Jones. And I have confidence in you, because you have confidence in yourself. And you have confidence in yourself because you have confidence in us. <laughs> and even if you hadn't got confidence in us, <laughs> you wouldn't show it. And that's what gives me confidence. <laughs> Well, it doesn't give me any confidence. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes like that. <laughs> Tell about that form. Now, then, if we pass these tests with flying colours, we should get 12 stars. I particularly want us to be a 12-star platoon, because if we're a 12-star platoon, you know what that means, don't you? Yeah, you get a mention in the AA book. <laughs> <laughs> or a very thin ice. Excuse me, Mr. Manrain. Virgil and the warden are at the window. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. I'll, I'll sort them out. I'll get rid of them. <laughs> what do you want? What do you think I want? I want my onions. Yes, he wants his onions. I can't come go now. We're doing the test. Look, I'm not hanging about here all day. Tell them to go away, Walker. They won't budge, sir. And shut the window. I... <laughs> now, the important thing to remember. He's still there, Mr. Manry. <laughs> oh, really? Go away! Turn off! <laughs> <laughs> I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some in that other room, but whatever it is, I'm relying on you to keep well on your toes. Last week, I had a drink with a sergeant in the Eastbourne Home Guard. Turned out that his people knew my people quite a few years ago. Actually, he's a rather nice fellow, you know. We're not interested in your social life, Wilson. Well, in that case, I don't think I'll bother to tell you. <laughs> tell us what? Well, he'd been on one of the tests. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Now, everybody, listen to Sergeant Wilson. Well, when you get into the room, they fire a lot of questions at you, and at the end, the officer goes out and uh, he leaves you alone, you see? Then somebody else comes in, in disguise, and plants a bomb, for heaven's sake. Look, when the officer leaves the room, I'll tip you the wink, and whoever comes in will jump on them. Oh, uh, there's another thing, sir. When you go into the room, they search you for weapons. Don't you worry, sir. I've come fully prepared. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Jonesy? It's a rumble. Ooh, a terrible weapon. What's a rummel? That's a thuggy scarf, what the thugs used in India to strangle their victims. They used to do a lot of strangling in them days today. A lot of strangling. <laughs> I don't think we should need it, too. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure about that, sir. You see that knot in the corner? That should be a silver rupee. If I put half a crown in that, do just as well. And you creep up behind your victims and you swing it like that. And the weight of the coin goes right round their neck. And then you tighten it and you tighten it. Enough to make their eyes water, sir. <laughs> Put it away. inside these doors, anything can happen. Question, are you prepared for the worst? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> He's prepared for the worst. Well, I want to hear you all together. What are you prepared for? We are prepared for the worst. <laughs> hmm? I'm not crying. Yes, you are. You're a coward, a coward. I hate cowards. Well, actually, sir, it's the onions. <laughs> Rubbish. One of your men crying, one of them talking rubbish. It's not a very good start, is it, Captain? What is it? It's not a very good start, sir. All of you together, what is it? Not a very good start. Hold up! Hold up! Right, sir. Now lead off at the level. Quick dodge, left, right, left. So 
out in search of a weapon. Yes, sir. Oh. Now, while you are in this room, you're under battle conditions. If you pass this part of the test, you get four stars. My sergeant and I can be anything. A Gestapo officer, a British naval officer, anything. Search them, sergeant. Yes, sir. All clear, sir. Right, over here. See, Joe, for a moment I thought he was going to comprehend my rumble. <laughs> Sergeant, Corporal, sit at the desk, remainder on the bed, please. I wish this fellow would talk the King's English. <laughs> <laughs> now I want you to be alert and on your toes at all times. What do I want? Hello, 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 I think I miss Mum. Would you like me to stand up and uh, sit down again? Keep sitting. Our first part of this test is for officers and NCOs only. I will ask three questions, and you four at the back will criticise your leaders when I ask for comment. What will you do? Criticise our leaders! <laughs> when I blow my whistle, I am a Gestapo officer. What am I? You are. You, you are. Come on, man, come on! I say, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> I am a Gestapo officer. What am I? Uh, you are a Gestapo officer. Gestapo? <laughs> You're a Gestapo officer. <laughs> right. <laughs> You said you were the Gestapo officer. I was just being alert. I am not a Gestapo officer until I blow my whistle. Somehow I don't think we're going to get those twelves. <laughs> right, right, right! <whistles> now, I'm Gestapo officer. Now you, Sergeant. Mm, yes? What are you doing in France? Well, I'm not in France. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you my parachute. I've captured you and now I'm interrogating you. Oh, I see. Well. Bonjour. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell me anything. Now, what are you doing in France? I don't know. You're trying to blow up a munitions factory. All right, I was trying to blow up a munitions factory. So, you admit it? Oh, really, this is too absurd. <laughs> right, I'll show you how absurd it is. I'm putting matches underneath your fingernails. <laughs> I'm setting light to them. Burning down. Now the breach your fingers. You're in agony. How do you like that? <laughs> well, to be absolutely honest, it isn't really bothering me very much. <laughs> Comment? I think he's very brave. <laughs> Guard my rear, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, sir. Get out of it. Clear off your phone. Next question. Captain? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speak, sir. Yes? In what capacity are you now speaking, sir? Are you Gestapo officer or what? I'm not anyone. I'm me. Well, didn't you ought to blow your whistle, sir? What for? Well, the last time you said, I'm not Gestapo officer till I blow my whistle. Then you blew your whistle and said, now I'm a Gestapo officer. Well, this time you ought to say, I am not me till I blow my whistle. Then you ought to blow your whistle and say, now I'm me. You <laughs> need to say what I'm me. I know who I am, they know who I am. Sit down. Well, he ought to blow his whistle when he says... All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. <whistles> now, I am me. Satisfied? Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Now he's him. <laughs> now, Captain, you are in a balloon traveling across enemy territory with your man here. The balloon is losing height. You must push one of them out. Which one will you choose? Ah. 
I think I should call for a volunteer. Can't do that. You must make a decision and choose one. What must you do? Make a decision and choose one. one. <laughs> I prefer to throw myself out, naturally, but uh, I realize that I'm too valuable for that. <laughs> I'm afraid it would have to be Private Godfrey. Comment? Sound common sense. Comment? <laughs> Well, whoever's thrown out, it certainly shouldn't be me. <laughs> I've got the whole of my life ahead of me. I haven't done nothing, no living at all. That's all the more reason why you should be the one. I mean, what you've never had, you never missed. <laughs> if the balloon's losing height, we can wait until it hits the ground, then Godfrey can just step out. Not <laughs> <laughs> at all, my dear fellow. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, my sergeant and I will leave the room for a short time. Sir, uh, may I leave the room with you? <laughs> no, you could not! <laughs> right, get around. I remember what Tubby Glossop, well, Sergeant Wilson's friend, said. When the officer leaves the room, someone enters in disguise with a bomb. How many marks are you going to give them? Marks? I'd like to mark that silly old fool of a corporal for life. Excuse me. Excuse me. Shall I take the tea into them now, sir? Yes, you might as well. Give me mine first. I need it. Now, whoever comes out of that door, <laughs> I get a box. We get four stars for this, as sure as eggs are eggs. Turn the tap off, please. Turn the leg in my basement. Hot, hot, chop! Not eat! Stand still. Right. This is phase two of the test. If you pass this, you get four stars. Now, Captain Manring, you've got to get all your men over this electrified fence using only this equipment. If you touch the fence, an alarm will go off and you'll start again. Any questions? Excuse me, please, sir. Is, is this a, a hypothetical electrified fence or a real electrified fence? It is a hypothetical electrified fence, but with a small charge running through it. Just enough to give the test a hint of zest. Thank you. <laughs> it won't hurt you. Just give you a wee shot. Now, Captain Manring, you have three minutes to appreciate the situation. Then I shall blow my whistle and you have half an hour to complete the test. On you go. Thank you. All right, I'll pet him. Now, this is a tough one, but we can crack it. I suggest that we all think very hard for a minute. Then I want ideas. Think them fast. Right, go. <laughs> Wilson? Well, uh... Fraser? Aye! If we just get... No, you know what? Pike! I'm sorry, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> James? Come to you. <laughs> Acrobat, sir. What? Yeah, I saw it once in a circus, sir. If you get a plank, we can put it on that small oil drum like that. I can stand on one end, and Private Walker, you can jump on the other end, and that will levitate me up over the fence. <laughs> so, you break his neck, sir. Yeah, far too dangerous, sir. Let me do it, sir. Let me do it, sir. Right, start! Because I won't go up too high, so just have to go with the fence. I'm very agile, you know, sir. Come along! Move! Move! <laughs> <laughs> Walker, come on, give us a hand. I've got to admire Jones, you know, Wilson. I like to see guts. You probably will. Why, Mr. Manry? Get ready to jump, Joe. 
Okay. Hope you know what you're doing, Jonesy. Don't argue, don't argue. Ready, <laughs> steady, jump! Sorry, sir, I've got to close the bar. It's uh, midnight. Oh, very well. On the way to my bed. phase of the test. If you pass this, you get four stars. Mr. Speaker. Sir, yes? May I be so forward and presumptuous looking as to ask how many stars we have inquired so far? In the first test, nothing. In the second test, I've given you one star for perseverance, in spite of the fact that you kept me awake half the night. <laughs> well, I suppose one's better than nothing. Rubbish. You haven't done very well. What haven't you done? <laughs> We yeah, haven't done, done very well. well. <laughs> confession is good for the soul, Captain. What is confession good for? The soul. <laughs> I do believe that boy's crying again. I'm not crying. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're a coward. A coward. I told you before, sir. It's the onions. <laughs> Rubbish. I'm not a coward. I've done ever such brave things. I've even taken dead mice out of traps. <laughs> right, right. Right. Now, this is the test. Concealed in that copse over there are the body of my men. I will blow my whistle and you will prepare yourselves. At the end of 15 minutes, I will blow the whistle again. My men will advance. You will then fire three dummy bombs at them and they will retreat. Clear? That seems straightforward enough, doesn't it, Wilson? Oh, I quite agree, sir. It couldn't be more straightforward. Sergeant, sir. give them the charges. Yes, sir. Three charges. Where are the dummy bombs, sir? Ah, now that's the interesting part of the test. I'll show you. Follow me. Right, right. Hey! They're real onions, Miss Rogers. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on them. There'll be a queue a mile long outside my shop tomorrow morning. Come on, we'll go and get the van. Gather round. Gather round. Now, gentlemen, I think you're all familiar with this fence. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Where are the dummy bombs? There. Oh. Now, when I blow my whistle, Captain, you and your men will double over here from the gun, get over the fence, collect the bombs, get back again. If you touch the fence, you start again. Blimey, if we couldn't get over that fence in five hours, we're not going to do it in 15 minutes. I <laughs> said this whole weekend would finish in disaster. <laughs> well, then double back to your gun with the bombs and wait for my signal to fire. Clear? Yes, sir. Very clear indeed. Right. Uh, 
Come on, hurry up. Do you think we should take these onions without permission, Mr. Rogers? What are you talking about? I pay for these onions, they're mine. Now, you just keep quiet and hold your frock out. What in the verger messing about with our van? Damn cheek. Come on, man, forward, at the double. Hold still, hold still. Now, look here, look here. How, how dare you interfere with our van? I'm only taking what's mine. We're doing a 12-star test. Listen, mate, if you don't clear off, you'll see more than 12 stars. Don't bandy words with him. We've more important things to do. Come on, follow me. See what I mean? Stand up to him, and he's like a prick balloon. <laughs> well, that was the first whistle, sir. We've got 15 minutes. We'd better get down to the fence, Mr. Manry. Now, wait a minute. There must be a way. Let's all think. Captain Manry, sir, it has just occurred to me. This is a smooth bore weapon. We could fire anything from it. Yeah, in that film, Captain Blood with Errol Flynn, they fired great shot from the cannons. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've got the charges. I mean, all we need is a few bits of iron and some nuts and bolts. Well, we haven't got any nuts and bolts. Well, we can take some of old Jones's van. How dare you? You're not <laughs> taking my van to pieces. Oh, Captain Manning, sir, if we fire bits of iron at those attacking people, we, we might make holes in them and, and spoil them. <laughs> Get them as well. <laughs> yes, of course, we might. The whole idea is absurd. It just occurred to me, sir. If we're going to fire this gun, we want something hard but not lethal. We haven't got anything hard but not lethal. Wait a minute. It's a last lot, Mr. Rogers. Well, you took long enough about it. Just a minute. We want those onions. You can't have them. In the name of the king, I demand those onions. You can demand as much as you like. You can't have them. Very well. We'll buy them. You can't. You're not registered with me. No, but you're registered with me, and if you don't sell us those onions, you've had it for kidneys. <laughs> All right, shilling a pound. I sold them to you for fourpence. Well, that's your hard bun. We'll take 20 pounds. Right, it'll cost you a quid. Hold your frock out, Mr. Yakeman. <laughs> Let me a pound, Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, looks like the funk the test, sir. What do you expect from softies like that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough, Pike. Hurry up, Virgil! Range! 200 yards! Range! 200 yards, right, sir. Lead the charge. My charge is loading, chap. Stand by the fire. So you're backing out, are you, Mannering? I shan't even give you one star now. We're not backing out of anything. What are you talking about, man? You've no ammunition. I'm due to blow the whistle in 30 seconds. I'll go ahead and blow it. There's no point. You all give it to me. achieved the object of the exercise, sir. I take my hat off to you, Mannering. That's the best bit of initiative I've seen in this whole war. I'm going to give you 12 stars. Thank you, sir. Hear that, men? We're a 12 star platoon. Hey! Just a minute, where are you going? I'm going to pick up those onions. You'll do no such thing. Those are ours. Come on, men. Hey! Get after them. <laughs> Thank you.